What is something that doesn't seem dangerous, but actually is dangerous? Getting rid of a computer without thoroughly wiping the hard drive. I've bought many a yard or garage sale computer and hard drive and most had anything from financial information to photos to documents. If you don't care to bother erasing them at least salvage a hard drive's rare earth magnets and destroy the platters. Software is readily available that enables you to reconstruct files and folders, even if they've been deleted. That's why you run a drill through the hard drive in three different spots. Had that as a summer job as a teenager. Disposing of vault files and drives for a company. I did that too for my internship at Enron. Most of Reddit is too young for this reference. But some of us aren't. Reminded me how my friend's Enron accountant boyfriend had to suddenly leave town for work like a couple of days before the scandal broke, and she never heard from him again. Driving. If you know what you're doing, and are paying attention, it's easy. But one little mistake can result in injury or even death. It doesn't even have to be your mistake. It terrifies me to see how inattentive people are on the road. That is the issue. If you were properly distracted by a cell phone you wouldn't notice how scary the other drivers are. A good book behind the wheel also works. If your state has pesky laws forbidding cell phones while driving. Yes. But what if I'm trying to eat spaghetti while reading the book and driving? No joke. I saw some dude eating spaghetti while driving. He was not reading a book. Hypothermia if you're out in the cold and suddenly start feeling really warm. It's bad news bears. I'll never forget, when I was teenager, my dorm's fire alarm went off during the winter, while I was in the shower. I came outside and everyone felt bad for me, but I was like oh I'm actually fine. Probably because I was just in hot water. Thank goodness some girl who was a big scare heard that, and knew the signs. She started taking off her winter coat, and asked around for hats and gloves. Demanded I put them on. She bundled me up till they got us back inside. At least if it was a real fire, you would have a fire to keep you warm. Having to evacuate due to a false alarm might be more life-threatening than a small fire in a modern concrete and steel building. Of course there's always the threat of toxic smoke to consider. When I was in college the fire alarm would go off at least twice a month. Sometimes at 5am. Sometimes right after classes pulled all nighters. Always some dumb fuck trying to smoke inside. Apparently there was a girl in my husband's class during his freshman year that had a fire alarm slash exhibitionist fetish. She'd pull the fire alarm at like 2 a. m. comma. And then rub one out in the stairwell after everyone evacuated. She was eventually caught and expelled. Kayaking in cold water. My old kayaking buddy used to go out in water in the forces with no gear until I explained to him how he was going to get himself killed. I flipped one in a Scottish lock on a field trip. You absolutely do not think straight. I was clinging to someone's kayak for day life without realizing I had a fucking life vest on. Also, Scottish locks are cold. I'm pretty sure Nessie just froze solid at one point and nobody's gone down there with a heater. Have gone swimming in them a fucking load of times. It's... Yeah. Bullock freezingly cold. Driving while tired. It is super easy to get into a very dangerous situation and not be able to realize it. Anytime I saw an imaginary flock of birds take off in the distance while driving at night. I knew I'd been driving long enough. I saw a squirrel coming up on the road in Australia. Australia doesn't have squirrels. That was break time for me. I never knew about the lack of squirrels in Australia. They failed the murder test, and were not allowed to stay. A lot of people don't seem to care about small wounds, and don't take care of them well. You do not want to get an infection. Those things are very bad, and can also be very dangerous. Dude I knew at my gym, yelled out in pain in the showers after. Asked him what was up, and he said he stubbed his toe. He kicked this lip they had to keep the water in pretty hard was some blood, but he was walking around, and said it just really hurt, but he'd be fine. Next time I saw him at the gym was like a year later. He told me the infection got so bad they almost amputated his foot. It took him that long to recover, and he said he still wasn't right. TL, doctor, doesn't make you a pussy, to see your doctor even for a stubbed toe. I felt stupid about going to the emergency room, because I had a clear. 
plastic splinter about 3 quarters of an inch, 2 centimeters, long in my palm. Stuck into the point where nothing was sticking out. At first, the nurse didn't believe there was actually anything in my hand. He found it eventually and had a difficult time getting it out. He told me I shouldn't feel stupid about coming in for just a splinter. Because he had so much trouble getting it out with two hands and the proper tools. I would probably have never gotten it out he said. And that I might have ended up with an infection with horrible consequences. Glad you got fixed up dude. Thank you. Certain baby animals. Mama might be lurking close by. Yep. The guy who met a mountain lion wasn't so happy. Do not pet the bear cub. Papa bear will ignore you mama will ignore you the babies will ignore you if you threaten the cubs. However, well, it's not likely you'll know which direction mama came from before you're dead. Small campfires. A tree root can burn for weeks without anyone knowing. Then it can spread. Embers can travel for miles before they extinguish. River rocks can have pockets of water in them and can explode when heated. I have made this mistake myself and got lucky. Always make sure your campfire is cold when you leave it. If you can't hold your hand on the ground, and I mean touching the dirt, for 15 seconds without feeling any heat, you haven't done enough. Also, in most states it is illegal to have a fire in national parks without having a shovel with you. Just a heads up. I live in Colorado, and approximately half the state has been on fire for the last month. And I got the willies reading this comment. As someone who enjoys primitive camping, and wants to see more of it, I fear the day when my hobby may be made illegal. They'll probably create licenses and more permits for it. Like a hunting education class, but to prevent forest fires. Drinking sparkling clear rain water out of a ditch while playing adventure man. You will shite and vomit out your own intestines for the next two days. Yeah. Those parasites are a bitch. Gotta boil it. Garage door springs. Those things will kill you in a second. I remember our garage door spring broke when I was a teenager and my dad had me come out to the garage so he could show me. He was explaining why that happens and why that's so dangerous. And the fear in his eyes still sticks with me today. He said something like if you kids had been out here and looked at me and shook his head and got a little teary eyed. Damn it I miss him. Sorry for your loss. Lost my dad a little over 10 years ago. Thank you. It's so crazy how some days it seems like things are almost normal. Then other days it feels like it just happened. A slight overdose of Tylenol. Cutting down large trees. If you don't know what you're doing. Call an expert. People die or are maimed every year. My mom's brothers were sawmillers. When I was 2. The youngest brother was killed by a tree. That came down wrong. When I was in high school, one of the others had his skull fractured the exact same way. Luckily, he survived. Even professionals that have been sawmillers for decades can die if a tree comes down wrong. I went on a tree felling out of Bunja a while back. Learned some good stuff. Like always have a clear path out. Guidelines. Cutting technique. Unless the terrain is especially challenging or the crew especially irresponsible. Those kinds of incidents should almost never happen. A cat bite. You can lose a finger from one of those. Mixing meds or drugs and even supplements Xanax is way more fun with booze, but it'll kill you. Some supplements like 5-HTP or Street John's wort mixed with 3 will kill you. MAOI and grapefruit makes opioids more fun but more deadly. Activated charcoal can help an upset stomach, but also will cancel any meds you took this birth control won't work. So to answer something from Walmart and Amazon mixed will kill you. Fruit juice mixed with painkillers can kill you. Odds with shrooms makes it harder. So don't mix if you are already having a bad time. Something a doctor gave you and a friend legally uses with minimal effects daily will kill you. Always find interactions online and test your dope. And B complex can turn your peony on yellow. I tried to sneak by a bus test by chugging water for a few days and then taking creatine and be complex. Might as well have signed my name as stoner mixed in a sun. It was so fucking neon. Pregnancy and delivery. Yes. I feel like people don't talk enough about how dangerous it is to carry and deliver a child. I've lost two people in my family due to complications in labor. One of those people being my mother. 
I'm so sorry for your losses. Big. If the hog haven't eaten food for at least one day, it will eat you. So yay. Pigs are dangerous. When they are hungry, no matter how cute they can be. The place I live was fairly rural 30 years ago. People would have farm animals, chicken, pigs that would walk free in their properties. I always heard of the story of a pig that got inside of the house where a baby was in a bassinet and the pig ate the baby's fingers and ear lobs. So yeah. I don't care for pigs.